Question number two. Hey, Dr. Islam, is there a specific diet that I recommend when it comes to IBS? Great question because I know everyone wants to try to see if they can adjust their diet and hopefully manage their symptoms. And me, I am a proponent as much as you can. And we can do lifestyle changes. We can change your diet and avoid the need for medications. I found this to be the best option and the best route for our IBS patients. So diet can help in some individuals with IBS. Now I stress some because it's not everyone. The data ranges between 30 and 50%. So about 30 to 50% of my IBS patients, if we implement dietary changes, will get better with those particular changes, which means the other percentage, the 70 to 50%, will not get better with dietary changes. So the thing you have to realize is IBS is not a dietary disease. It is a disease that diet can play a role, but it may not be the only reason or the only solution. So the first things I recommend when it comes to IBS is to eliminate dairy food and dairy products and to eliminate artificial sweeteners. These are very commonly the most common reasons why people can have IBS issues. And I will tell you, these simple changes alone will really get people to feel so much better and to resolve their issues as well. Now, there are other diets out there specific for IBS. One is called the low FODMAP diet. FODMAPs are particular carbohydrates that are known to produce a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, and a lot of water. And under the help of a nutritionist, if you can minimize those particular foods, sorry, I have really bad allergies today. If you minimize those particular foods, you can minimize the IBS symptoms from that and that should hopefully help resolve the symptoms. And the best data is a low FODMAP diet. Now I stress that we typically want to do this with the nutritionist because it's so restrictive that I don't want to get to a point where all of a sudden you are scared to eat anything. And there are a lot of, there's a lot more evidence in which IBS patients have such a restrictive diet that their quality of life is so impaired. So we really want to have a nutritionist involved to expand that diet as much as we can to do it safely and do it for you. Sometimes in some individuals, being on a gluten-free diet can be helpful as well. But I will stress, gluten itself is not a bad guy. And people want to say that it is, and it's not. There is no clear evidence unless you actually have an autoimmune disease like celiac disease that gluten alone is going to cause inflammation. It does not. The vast majority of the villains when it comes to food are the FODMAPs. Now, a couple other, couple other general advices I recommend already mentioning avoiding dairy, avoiding artificial food sweeteners. I would avoid also processed food as well. There's nothing good with processed foods and processed foods have a lot of ingredients in them that are not good for you. They have a lot of grease and it can just be bad for your GI tract as well. And then lastly, spicy foods may be something to avoid as well. But these simple changes can help out in some individuals, but not everyone. And this is why I try to stress that IBS is not just a dietary disease. Sometimes it involves medications and other treatments to help get your symptoms taken care of.